Okay, so we're, we're, we're up to item 15, which is the Urban Vehicle Kilometres Travelled Reduction Programme. Um, and uh, I think we've got uh, uh, David. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Chair. Look, uh, apologies from Robert Simpson, who is the author of this report. He is unwell today. So uh, M Michael Roth and I will cover this report off for him today. I'm David Hawkey from Auckland Council, for those who don't know me. I know we um, don't have too much time left in the meeting, so I'll quickly give us uh, a presentation to hopefully explain uh, and also help the decision making for this um, item. Great. Just to give a bit of context to understand where the requirement has come from to do uh, vehicle kilometre um, uh, travel reduction plans and also. Uh, to get a feeling for how it connects well or connects with other important processes that are going on, particularly the Auckland Integrated Transport Plan. The uh, Government's Emissions Reduction Plan, the ERP, includes a nationwide target to reduce light vehicle VKT by 20% by 2035, and it's worth noting there that this is about light vehicles and not freight vehicles as another part of the ERP. The Ministry of Transport is expected to finalise a sub-national VTK reduction targets by June 2023, and that is the targets that will come to regions and cities around New Zealand. Uh, the RP requires that all Tier 1 cities, and Auckland is a Tier 1 city, to develop a VKT reduction programme. It's worth noting that uh, while this work is, would go on in parallel to the Auckland Integrated Transport Plan, that plan would be completed first, and that would influence the development of a program, and also would the AT's letter of expectation. Uh, local authorities, when they are developing their programs, are required to work with partners, including Wakatahi, Māori, and, the, and local communities. And I suppose the other important thing for this committee to note that the government has signalled that future funding opportunities will be linked to the development of VKT reduction programs. Just quickly about the development of the VKT program and just some key things to understand. The first thing is the program needs to show how Auckland will achieve its sub-national VKT target. It needs to consider both land use and transport actions in an integrated and coordinated matter. So, what this means in practice is the program will require a joint work from both Auckland Council and Auckland Transport staff, and will require input from Wakakatahi, Māori and Auckland communities. I just also note that it is, this is a reasonably complex program to, put to, uh, program to put together, even though we have done some work in the past on this, but there is ability for us to get um, some funding assistance to, de to develop the program, which will be quite helpful for staff, given that we're delivering quite a few things at the moment, and particularly we are working on the Auckland Integrated Transport Plan at the same time. Uh, I suppose quickly about the content of the program, it's sort of broken in primarily into two main parts. The first part is to we have to explain the size of the challenge, which is basically where we are in terms of VKT against what we need to be and outline the challenges and barriers to get to that sub-regional national target. And as you've heard from the, many of the presentations today, there are quite a range of those challenges and barriers that we are facing. Uh, then we, we would need to outline a programme in terms and based around some of these three strategic uh, shifts and focused on these focused areas. We also would need to give indications of the costs that are would be required to deliver things on these focus areas. Uh, the, the, just give a uh, favour for the timelines. When you look at it, it's actually quite a short timeline because what the expectations from government is, is that local authorities would have a draft programme in place ready for input into the regional land transport development processes in August and that all Tier 1 programmes would be finished by December. I suppose the, um, the main recommendation in this report is that we are advising that we establish a reference group to give oversight and direction to staff during this program. And some of the thinking behind why we are advising this is, one, it's quite a complicated thing to put together. And as you've heard today through many of the presentations, there's quite a lot to think about. And, and doing these sort of things will have different effects across the region for different people and different communities. The other thing, it will require Auckland Council and Auckland Transport staff to work together on the programme. And we also have been thinking about how best can we ensure that 
the expectations of a letter of, a, of expectation to Auckland Council around appropriate oversight of, of development of programs and also to him trying to think about how can we ensure that our obligations under the Māori outcomes uh, framework around co-development of important, uh, important issues with Māori are, I suppose, addressed. So with some uh, review of other things we have done, conversations within senior management and some with the chair of this committee, we are recommending a reference group of the following members. It's pretty much a 3-3-3 three, three, three type arrangement of the key parties. Uh, and um, I suppose we think that that, that arrangement would hopefully give us the, the, the right sort of oversight that we require. We're also recommending report backs to this committee at key milestones. And the other thing to note is the final version of the program would be brought here and for AT's board for approval. I suppose the last thing there, the, the, just the, the, just the recommending, recommendations that we've put up as part of this paper. So hopefully they'll give us a quick overview of of the report and the uh, things in it, and now I'll hand back to uh, the chair for to continue with the meeting. Th mm. Thank you, thank you, David. Do we do we have any uh, questions of David, Councillor Henderson? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, just wondering the process around accessing the um, CRF funding, um, potentially applying to the reference group or something like that. Um, I've got a fantastic idea for something that needs funding. Right. Uh, well, there, there, there is a quite a is quite a short time through the chair. It's quite a short time frame to get that process. Obviously, we have if, if if there is an agreement of uh, for a reference group to go ahead, yeah. uh, these are sort of things that we could discuss with them. Yeah. Okay. I shall write a letter. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Henderson. Councillor Philippina. Thank you, Chair. Tēnā koutou. Um, how are, are the two Mana Whenua representatives going to be uh, selected? Oh, thank you. Through the chair. Well, to be honest, at this stage, I suppose the first thing that we have thought about is the reference group itself. So if that was uh, approved by this committee, the next step would be for staff to get advice from our own internal experts on that, the IMSB secretariat, and take advice from the co-chairs from that reference group put forward. But uh, to, to be assured, the idea of the process would be a transparent process to... Um, get the right people for that reference group. So that would be, I suppose, the next step of us thinking for us how to do that properly. Can I suggest through you, Chair, that Nga Matara, our Māori unit, also be uh, contacted for advice? Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Lee? Yeah, I, I, I'm just coming up to speed with, the, with this... Um, policy, but when we're talking about uh, Auckland's urban vehicle kilometres travel reduction program, um, I see we're talking about a light vehicle fleet, but uh, won't most of those be electric vehicles? Uh, through the Chair, the focus of this work would be primarily light vehicles that are not electric vehicles. It would be vehicles, I suppose it's really about how we have programs in place to ensure we, you know, we, we, there's less reliance on the travel of, of other light vehicles. Yeah, yeah I, I just have a problem because a lot of the road reallocation um, program assumptions are that all vehicles are carbon emitting internal combustion uh, light vehicles, but more and more, um, qu quite a remarkable percentage are uh, EVs and. I don't see any acknowledgement in that. It's, there seems to be a war on motor vehicles, well, um, private vehicles, whatever, whatever you, however you describe them, light, yeah. light um, um, vehicles. But it's, it's, yeah, the yes, truth through, is not that, is uh, it? Yeah, oh, yes, through the chair. Look, the, what, this is the, the, the VKT reduction program is one of many actions within the ERP document. So there is a number of other actions that primarily are focused on the uptake of EV vehicles sort of thing. So I suppose if you, this is, this is one of the many actions in that national program, and this is one that have been allocated down to us. So there is a whole range of other actions for EV uptake, including, uh, you know, the, the clean car rebate and other things that, that the government is doing. Okay, uh, finally, uh, Councillor Turner. 
Thank you. I just wondered how you think we're going to get the public to take this seriously when they see one worker picking up rubbish on the side of the road and there's a bumper truck in front of him and a bumper truck behind him, and when we have maintenance programs where we now are outcomes-based, so we run backwards and forwards to call-outs rather than doing a lap, when we have multiple contractors turning up to the same suburb on the same day multiple times because one's doing the park and one's doing the open spaces, and it goes on, we seem to be contradictory. Oh. Uh, through the chair, oh, oh, thank, thanks for, for those comments, and they're noted. I suppose I wouldn't want to preempt the, the, what the work we'll do right now is, is about establishing the work, so but we'll take that on board. Uh, Councillor Walker, finally, um, in this um, scope of work, is it is it going to be possible one to have trials, two to seek um, uh, expressions of interest because there are any number of um, companies that have put proposals to um, Auckland Transport that have been um, declined. And three, can we do what other cities do and have attended, for example, eco-mobility um, events, for example, that close off part of a city to actually trial and make things happen and exemplify things? So are those sorts of things going to be inherent in what you're proposing here? Uh, through the chair, well, th again, I think uh, that I wouldn't want to preempt where the work lands, but I, I think what we were important in doing this work is, you know, have an open mind as we do the work, and I suppose to think it, think about it a bit more broadly in terms of what this work needs to do. I think one, it needs to look at what we do at the moment and what, how can we do perhaps it differently or better, and that's differently in line with our level of expectation. Then there's thinking about well, what other things that could we do, and I suppose the other important thing to highlight in this work is. What are these key barriers and other things that I need to, we would need to sort of try to get removed or changed if we are to achieve those? So I suppose, again, I just don't want to um, talk about specifics because that's what the work needs to do. Yeah. Mm. OK, thank you. OK, uh, thank you for the, the questions. I, I'm happy to move it. Do I have a second? Seconder, uh, Councillor Fletcher? No? OK, thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Against? OK, carried. Th th thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Craig and Andrew, uh, sorry for keeping you waiting so long, guys. It's, it's been a long day for you. Um, this is quite a quite an important uh, item, flood recovery program for the three water operations. So um, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Craig, to introduce and uh, to take us through the. Yeah, thank process. you very much, Mr. Chair. I think Andrew will just give a quick update on a couple of key issues that are occurring within Watercure at the moment. And I'll just give a quick update on stormwater and then we can open the floor for questions. Kia ora. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr Chair. Um, two key issues to update you on. Uh, last time we spoke, I mentioned the Huia water treatment plant operating at reduced capacity, um, at, and that's due to the sedimentation in the dams. That is slowly declining. So I think at, at the storm it was about 140 turbidity units. Last week it was down to 90. This week, at the moment, it's around 50-odd. We want it to be between 0 and 10, <laughs> so we've got a ways to go. So that just means that the Huia water treatment plant is still not operating at its full capacity, and that reduces the safety margins for other um, parts of the water network. Um, and the other major hotspot going on at the moment is at um, Murawai, uh, the water treatment plant there was red stickered. It is still red stickered. So the community that were um, provided with water there are getting water via water tankers. Um, there's a number of properties that have recently had their stickers changed to a white sticker. Um, so there's a bit of work to do to provide additional tankering to support those residents. Um, but that is going to take quite some time to get a permanent solution in there um, because the, in, you know, the entire treatment plant is still red sticker. And I guess on the stormwater side of things, our real focus now is as we slowly move out of, out of um, into recovery mode, is really thinking what the recovery program will look like for healthy waters. And to be honest, we've got a unique opportunity to do some quite significant, I'd almost call it build back better in terms of the infrastructure and flood resilience. 
and so we'll be presenting that thinking back to the um, council in, in, in April. And I think it'll, because um, there's really a sense of urgency about need to move on um, properties where there might be insurance claims being resolved at the moment, and we need to think very carefully about at least giving you the opportunity of looking at where there are um, opportunities to do things differently and what that might look like, and that can then feed into the budget process for, 